officially live on YouTube for the Tuesday edition of the Not Your Average Investor Show. I am your host, Pablo Gonzalez. With me, as always, the man that I affectionately like to call GC because of his genius concepts, because he knows how to generate cash flow, because he's a great co-host, and because his name is Greg Cohen. Say hello, Greg. Hello, everybody. And with us, as always, we refer to her as MTM because she brings us the moments that matter. And she's a phenomenal community manager taking care of you. And that's why she's earned the name Madison. The Magnificent. Say hello, Madison. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and we want to welcome the community. We want to welcome you if you're watching on YouTube. We want to welcome you if you're listening on the podcast. And we really want to welcome you to a little inside party that we got going on over at nyaiclass.com. Mm -hmm. GC and I have put together this 101, just get to zero to 60 on how to passively invest in rental properties. It is the Not Your Average Investor's Guide to the Smart Way that People Invest in Rental Properties. Don't quote me on exactly that whole title, but you can quote me on nyaiclass.com if you are there before June 20, June 19th. <laughs> before June 19th, then you can get it for free by typing in NYAI guide free in the promo code factor. We want you in there. We want you learning how to do this thing with us or without us. It, it arms you with the right questions, the right knowledge that you need to know to grow your wealth as a passive rental property investor. Do you see anything to add to that? You're going to love it. Over 100 folks, 150 folks have signed up. I don't know if the number's even grown from there, Madison. You can let us know if the number's even grown from there. But over 150 folks have signed up already. And that's blown away. Pablo, myself, Madison, our entire team. So thank you everybody for jumping in. And we really are looking for feedback. I just left a meeting right now where we're taking all the feedback that those folks who are going through the class right now are giving us. And we are going to take your feedback and make it even better and better as we you know, start to charge for this thing. We are going to charge $9.97 for the class. Some That's of dollars. $997. Dollars. American pesos dollars. Or? American dollars. Okay. American dollars. We're going to go with American dollars on that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so would love all of you to take advantage of that now until June 19th. NYAIclass.com. And NYAI guide free if you want to get up on that thing for a deal. And once you do that, you take the class, you can just join the community, be stress-free because you know all the jargon all the language, and you get to get part of what, GC? You get to be part of what? The roll call, baby. We got our leadoff hitter, John Hannon, kicking us off as usual. We got the the real, the real maven from the mountains of Colorado, the real estate maven from the mountains of Colorado, our friend, Leslie Wilson. We got the ringmaster. Andrew Barnhill. Andrew Barnhill. We got the MVP of the community in the house. Mr. Lee Bishop. Mr. Lee Bishop. We got Joe B. One Kenobi Joe up in Bussy. here. Joe Pussy in the house. We got Lewis Hudnell from where? Ma -ma 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 Melipitas. California. <laughs> we got our friend from the West Coast with his trademark. Good morning. Good afternoon, JWB family. Mr. Nadine Shaw. We got the mountain man from the mountains of the Dewey, Colorado. Bill Green. Mr. Green. <laughs> who, else, who else we got in here? We got Big Papa now. We love him when he calls him Big Papa. Pops, how are you, buddy? One GC's father. Father, father in charge. Founder, co-founder of Greg Cohen. There we go. Jay Cohen. <laughs> Throw your hands in the air if you're a true player. All right. We got the regulars. Our second family, Rosalind and Gary Riley from Murrieta, California. We, we salute, salute you. you and we regard you. And we regard you. We <laughs> regard you. Yeah, we got to do with ours. We, we regard you. Uh, we'll get that one. Day, <laughs> I promise. We got Not Your Average Guest chiming in from San Diego. If you chimed in from the text, you pop up as Not Your Average Guest, so you got to let us know your name, but we're happy you're here. We got Robert Jones back in the house saying, hi, everybody. Good to have you, Robert. We got our favorite fiscal fiduciary <laughs> financial advisor, Kelly Bear. Kelly? Um, I didn't know if there was another F. <laughs> Kelly, great to see you. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mike McLeod is back in the house. Mike McLeod, Mike, good to have see you. Mike. We got Big Earn. Big Earn. Right. Really. Good to see you, Earn. See you, Big Earn. We got Chris Gonzaga. From the illustrious Hudson illustrious Valley. Hudson mm -hmm. Valley of mm -hmm. New York. It's an illustrious place to be. Who else? We got the first family in the house, the patriarch and the matriarch, Ken and Carolyn Malin. We, we salute, salute you. you. And fairy godmother in the house oh, from lovely fantastic. Monterey, California. What's up, Jen? Jen Pills and Jen Pills in, in the house, spreading cheer and real estate wishes. We got, we got a good crew today. We got, a, we got the crew all up in the house. We got Marilyn Cotterman from Homosassa, Florida. That's the home of the manatees, home Pablo. of the manatees. If you're new here and you don't know, you swim with manatees in Homosassa, Florida. That's what you do. Who else? We got the touchdown maker in the house. Shannon Baker. Shannon Baker. Oh, by the way, funny story. Yeah. Shannon Baker on my team. Mm -hmm. She was telling me in the in the Tuesday morning meeting the other day, she goes, 
my husband loves my nickname of the touchdown maker. She's like, whenever I go home now, I'm called the touchdown maker. So Shannon, it's awesome to have you here. And we love even more that the touchdown maker nomenclature has gone far and wide in your life here. We got Denny Davis joining us stateside nowadays from Arkansas with a pink suit. There we go. Hey, we might have some some trash talk for Denny now when it comes to college football. Season. Yeah, we do. Speaking of trash talk, we got Sergio Pert on the house. Go Gators. Go Gators. There go we go. Gators. Who else? We got Irvay Fressel on the house with a what up, fam. It's been a minute. Sorry. I hope everyone is. Irvay. Listen, sorry, dude. We We're did not wear matching shirts. We didn't match for we you apologize. today. We apologize, Irvay. <laughs> we, got, we got Nathan Mukhtar in the house. Hi, JWB. Nathan Mukhtar chiming in from San Diego. Fantastic. New welcome name? to I think that's new a new name. New name? Welcome. welcome. Welcome to the, the party. Community. Welcome to the community. We got Victor Mudrick back in the house from Virginia. Mudrick, Big from Vir- client. Vic from Virginia. I like that. I like that. That has got a nice name to it. Who else? Anybody else? John Moran from Port St. Lucie. Fantastic. John, what a group we have yes, here. We got the group. We got the group. And Marty Quinn All right. from Golden. Considering investing with you all soon. Golden, Colorado. Marty, new name? I think so. I think so. Marty, it's really wonderful to have you. Yeah, good to have you. Marty, I would definitely encourage talking to a lot of folks in the chat here as you're considering investing with us. There's probably 75% of the folks here on the call right now have invested. They've been in your shoes. So make sure you take advantage of that resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is all about you having your own line of communication with people that are not us. Yeah, there <laughs> right? you go. So, so get your own opinions out there. And GC, I got to tell you, man, I was a little sore. Okay. That we moved back my story. Yeah. I feel I, like I feel like I've earned it. But you know what? Mm-hmm. You said we got some breaking news in the house. The people have demanded it. We got multiple texts about this like idea of having a stadium show, talk about this impact at Jacksonville from people that are JWB community, Jacksonville community, our friends in the spike ball group. Yeah. And we give the people what they want. When you send in suggestions, want. when you hear signals that when we hear signals that you care about something, we immediately care and we're going to put it on. So without further ado, we're going to world premiere on the Not Travage Investor Show, the video, the vision, the pitch from the Jacksonville Jaguars of this new stadium that's going to happen. And then we're going to break it down, talk about what we heard in that video, talk about a little insider knowledge that Greg over here has got. He plays a little insider baseball out here in downtown. Talk about what we're hearing, talk about what it means, and tell you what our best advice is based on what we're hearing out here. You ready? I love it. Let's do it. Y'all ready for this? Jacksonville unites us. We're all connected to this place by our beaches and our waterfront, by our culture, by our people, and yes, by our sports. Our city is on the cusp of something great, a bold city with a bold vision for the future. And our stadium is part of that. Can they see me? For me, I, hope so. I just can't describe this baby. moment. I'm going to seal it up and live with it the rest of my life. Not yet. This transformation will become a catalyst for Jacksonville that transcends the Jaguars and the NFL, creating a revitalized and re-energized urban destination that will show everyone and remind us that we are indeed proud, bold, and committed. Jacksonville is ascending, and the nation is taking notice. We have a growing workforce. We have a robust healthcare and higher education community. And of course, we have the Jaguars, ready to defend their AFC South Division title, but hungry for more. It's our time to show the world that Jacksonville has arrived. The transformed stadium will be a shining beacon on the water, welcoming and dynamic, connecting our neighborhoods and waterfronts and creating a new measure for what a sports and entertainment experience can and should be. Fans will enter through a tropical Floridian park into the concourse, now raised 30 feet above ground level, providing unmatched views to the city and the water. Now four times as wide, the concourse will be punctuated with interactive social bars and food offerings native to our home in Jacksonville. Using state-of-the-art materials and the latest technology, a shade canopy will reduce the heat factor by 70%, 
protecting fans from the elements. It will position downtown Jacksonville as an essential stop for the biggest entertainment and sporting events in the world. Major concerts, music festivals, <laughs> international soccer matches and tournaments, and improve our community's candidacy to play host to major NFL events such as the NFL Draft. We know that our community deserves the best, and we're going to deliver the best. This will be much more than a stadium. It will lead to the reimagination and renaissance of existing nearby communities, such as the Out East neighborhood, serving as an economic generator that has been missing for too long. It will help to redefine downtown Jacksonville as a place where business and higher education intersect with the potential of a new University of Florida satellite campus on the fairground site. Okay. It will be a driver in the growth and evolution of our industries and workforce, creating jobs, inspiring careers, and capturing the imagination of people everywhere. This venue is much more than just a stadium. It is a reflection of our city and community, celebrating the essence of who we are while casting a vision of who we're becoming. Welcome to the new home of live sports and entertainment in Jacksonville. It was always the Jacks. It is and will always be Jacksonville. And we will always be Duval. Wow. Man. I'm jacked up. Chills. Chills. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've watched that video probably five times, and I love it even more every time. I know when you start swaying and feeling the rhythm in your soul, Greg. That doesn't happen very often. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> That's what people don't know out here. All right, so we'll we'll break down the video in a second. I want to hear the insider deets. You were breaking down a couple of like details, like economic, you know, like costs and and what's going on sure. and the real estate deal behind this thing. Um, I think is really important because if, if there's one thing that we've learned in past episodes, right? Having Ken Babby on mm -hmm. this idea of stadiums and professional franchise ownership is, you know, for the, for the average public, a very emotional thing, but for the billionaire team owner, mm -hmm. this is the name of the game, it's right? A big deal. The, the real estate that comes with owning professional franchises in the urban core of a city is essentially a huge, huge deal and kind of like the crowning achievement of billionaires. Yeah. So let's talk about that part. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's at an intersection right now of a lot of big kind of inflection points, Yeah. right? We've got the inflection point of downtown. We've got the inflection point of the Jags franchise. We've got the inflection point of new leadership for our city. Mm -hmm. Mayor Donna Deegan, she just won and will be installed as the new mayor here soon. And so there we go. We good? We good? Um, so there's a lot of really important things, sometimes new players in the deal as well. So, man, such an exciting time to put a really great deal together for all involved. Heck yeah. And listen, the stadium deals, if you think about NFL franchises and cities, we have enough examples where that, those stadium deals or the deals that don't happen become the major lightning rod for why an NFL franchise might leave. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. to have the Jaguars here, to to have them committed here, obviously a stadium is a big part of that. So this is a this is a very big opportunity for the city, a big opportunity for the Jags, a big opportunity for our new mayor to lead us there. A lot of excitement coming into this. And this is going to be a major theme as you're going from now. It has been a major theme sort of behind closed doors up until now. It's going to be a major talking point between now and think Q1, Q2 of next year. So here's kind of the numbers on it. So the, the plan that the Jags announced will have a stadium renovation costing between $1.3 and $1.4 billion. You. Yeah. But as you heard in the video, and I know we'll talk more about what what the big pitch is so much more than just the stadium. Mm -hmm. The entire project that the, the Jags are proposing is a $2 billion investment or a $2 billion project of that one point, let's call it 1.4 is the stadium. 
But then there's development of other areas around the stadium that are a part of the entire project that the Jags are pitching. The way the numbers are pitched right now from the Jags, yep. and keep in mind, this has not had any decisions by anybody in the city yet. They've just received the pitch. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, I would imagine things would change in many different directions, but the proposal is that the Jags would cover 50% of the total development here, okay. which 50, 50 sounds really good, yep. right? right? If you dig a little percent of 1.2 bill, no 50% of 2 billion of 2 billion. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now included in that is the stadium mm -hmm. and the way the numbers would actually break down is this would have the city paying a greater portion of the stadium costs. Okay. And so it would not be 50, 50 on the stadium, according to the initial proposal by the Jags, mm -hmm. their proposal is a bit, a bit bigger and they're proposing to do 50, 50 of the entire deal beyond the stadium. So that's interesting, right? 50, 50 stadium or 50, 50 proposal of the entire 2 billion is going to be a very big topic for discussion as, sure. We, sure. as we go in here. Okay. That's like the big kind of like, the overall negotiation that's going to happen. That's probably the, the main storyline in there. I think so. Okay. I think so. There's okay. a, there's a pretty big Delta there yeah. between 50, 50 of the stadium and 50, 50 of the overall, every, you know, $2 billion project there. And so how do we come to a meeting in the minds where there's value for all yeah. is going to be a big, a big thing. When you, what do you know about like how these things take place? What do you think is going to end up happening? Right. Like I hear, okay, there's a potential for like, if, if, if you, if you, if I heard this correctly, like $1.2 billion stadium deal, $2 billion overall development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The first thing that I think is if it's going to go 50, 50, no matter what, mm -hmm. that means that there is some serious money, right? Like Shad Khan, a, a real, a real worldwide billionaire player in, in all of this stuff, right? Owns owns what is it like Arsenal Stadium? Like he owns yeah. he owns other yeah, I can't remember which one. He owns one of the biggest Premier League franchises yeah. in, in England as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Like this guy's not a rookie. <laughs> and he is debating whether to drop six hundred million or a billion, you know, like 600 million to a billion mm -hmm. into downtown Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I hear is, okay, smartest money in town mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or up there mm -hmm. is thinking, I want to pour somewhere between 600 million to a billion into downtown Jacksonville is the first thing that stands out to me. Right. So pretty good sign for the city, mm -hmm. right? Like seeing, seeing that this is, he's not going to spend that kind of coin on something that isn't going to like pencil out for mm -hmm. him. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that feels like a really nice validation of investment, which if I was coming from his standpoint is like, Hey, if I'm bringing this kind of like credit, this kind of money, and I believe that, you know, like I'm going to get, you know, a return on 600 to a bill here, you should probably feel comfortable that you're going to get a return 600 to a bill. Is sure. that, is that pretty fair to like think about? Well, yeah, I, I would I would assume that, right? Yeah. Deals this big only work if there's value on both ends, right? Yeah. So I know that there's folks within the city that are running the models of economic development and, you know, what is a deal like this worth to the city? Because ultimately the city has stakeholders that they need to report to. What if we were to drop, call it 600 million or more into a deal, what return on investment are we going to receive mm -hmm. from that? And you do that through tax revenue growth from additional economic drivers from new jobs being created and things of that nature. So yeah, I think both sides are trying to figure out the value here. One other point that I was thinking, which I think we need to talk a little bit more about is you remember when Mark Lamping was here, Mark, Mark Lamping is the president of the Jack, Jacksonville Jaguars. Yep. And you know, what he was talking about, he was, we were talking a little bit about the stadium deal, but this was probably six months ago or nine, nine months ago when it wasn't the, the biggest, you remember he said, listen, you know, through our investments that we've already made in downtown Jacksonville, we look at this as an opportunity for us to see not just a return on investment from this new stadium deal, mm -hmm. but in augmentation and maximization of the other investments we've already made in downtown Jacksonville. Like what? Well, the fact that that Chad and the Jags are redeveloping the shipyards, mm -hmm. which was all over that video that you just saw there, that yep. beautiful marina and that class a office space mm -hmm. they're and already doing that they are already doing that yeah. they're already dumping over 300 million dollars into that okay. right next to the stadium mm -hmm. and that's going to have a four seasons 
So our first five-star hotel downtown is going to be the Four Seasons. Shot also owns Four Seasons across the world as well. Mm -hmm. So he's bringing a Four Seasons here. So that's already done. That's already happened, right? Mm -hmm. And the city and, and Shot have worked together and there's, there's incentives that he's getting, of course, to do that. But the way that this reflects on the city in the way that Mark Lamping shared it with us, is he said, listen, we can get a better return on our investment because of the investments we've already made in downtown because we're committed. Yep. What that means is, we can ask for less incentives mm -hmm. required on this new stadium deal. If you think that your ultimate return goals are mm -hmm. what you're, how you're making your decision, which is how these high level decisions are made, if they've already got an investment here, which will do better if the city's, you know, investment in this in a stadium deal comes to fruition, then they have multiple ways to get to their return requirement, which ultimately means as a city we would need to give less incentives than maybe another city would need to give mm -hmm. simply because of Chad's commitment to he's downtown. Because he's pot committed. He's right? pot committed, <laughs> right? right? Like, like yeah. he's already done these things, which is not normal for an NFL owner to do. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm a huge Steelers fan, yeah. right? I, I don't think I've ever read an article about the Rooney's developing some part of downtown Pittsburgh. No, maybe yeah. it happened, but I certainly yeah. haven't been aware of it. And I love the Rooney's and I love the Steelers. Like it's not, yeah. it's not a requirement to have an NFL franchise and an owner I mean, it's not normal to have what we have here in Jacksonville as far as Shad believing in downtown. Got it. So if I'm if I'm reading between the lines, I'm hearing you say, first of all, we're talking about this big deal. This is a series of big deals that have been happening. Yes. Right. That are already happening in downtown. Um, we've talked about it a lot on the show. JWB is doing some big deals downtown. JWB has also been a part of like a committee of recruiting other developers mm -hmm. to do things downtown. ShotCon is one of these developers that is already dropping a whole bunch of coin downtown, regardless of this deal, Absolutely. right? It's already happening. And this feels like the opportunity to put a crown jewel on top of it all, which means that multiple stakeholders have alignments and interests to make this thing happen, meaning the city, Shad, other developers to pitch in if something has to happen and do their part. Because there's a big, big win-win thing here that 100%. is already in route that people already see and people have already put a bunch of money into and don't want to walk away from. 100%. That's pretty cool. It's unique. Yeah. That's why this is such a topic on this show. Like That's why this is an inflection point for Jacksonville overall. And to bring it home, because many of you are investors in rental properties in those neighborhoods right around downtown right? That's why this is a, an urgent moment. Yeah, It's like when you have these catalysts, when the stars are aligning like this, yeah. it happens fast. Yeah. And when it happens fast, more developers start coming in. They see an opportunity to make a great return on their investment. Yeah. And that's when rents start going up yeah. and home prices start going up in downtown and around downtown. And so- yeah, this, when I saw this video, my friend texted it to me, my cousin texted it to me, who's not in Jacksonville. Yeah. I had two or three other people reach out to me with this video. I didn't even know it was released. And this was like middle of last week. And I said, oh my goodness. I watched this video and it was like the Jags speaking the same language that we have been speaking on this show yeah. for over a year now, yeah. except they used the catalyst of the stadium. Yeah. And we haven't talked about the stadium yet, but if you just talked about everything else we've talked about as a catalyst, the University of Florida mm -hmm. with their satellite campus coming to downtown Jacksonville, yep. right? We talked about all of the drivers of jobs coming into Jacksonville yep. already. We talked about JWB and how we own 20 city blocks in the North core, the North part of downtown Jacksonville. Like you just supplement want any of those for stadium and the pitch is the same. Same pitch. And I loved that. And I love how you I love how you immediately brought it back to the realization of the reason why we care about this on this show specifically, right? We're here to educate you about real estate and all that stuff, but let's be real. We are a community of people that own workforce housing surrounding the urban core of Jacksonville. And we have been making the argument for a long time that Jacksonville's downtown is a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. And when that thing turns on, right, when it reaches this critical mass of flywheel of developers coming in, then all of the surrounding areas will 
the rapidly rise in appreciation, rapidly rise in rents. We've seen it in Nashville. We've seen it in Charlotte. We've seen it in Denver. This is a formula that we know. And at the end of the day, what this video represents is Warren Buffett saying, hey, everybody, I'm about to drop 1.5 billion into this stock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and in the stock market, you're not allowed to like have that insider information right. and then move on it. And if Warren Buffett were to advertise it openly, the stock would immediately shoot up mm -hmm. the, in, in three seconds. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Jacksonville right now, the ability to tie your money, right? Like to bet on the winning horse alongside billionaires that are coming at it with a giant set of chips and just put one chip. Right, yeah. ne right next to them on the one table, chip, one by, rental property by, by, by investing in one rental property yeah. or three or five or How whatever. Many chips you got? And the, the, the fact that in order to do that in any other town, you would have to like have a partner there that, you know, that you can count on to manage it. Cause or else you can only do it locally, or it's going to be a bad experience. That is at the end of the day, why we are so freaking pumped about it on this show. Mm -hmm. And we'll break down the rest of this stuff, but like, you know, I, want to make that very, very clear, anybody listening, that that is the reason to go to chatwithjwb.com. If you don't know much about it and you want to just start understanding what it takes to buy one of these workforce housing properties and take advantage of this unique situation right before appreciation goes bananas and rents go bananas and there's all this overpromise on the deliver, go to chatwithjwb.com, get that conversation started. And let's keep talking about this really, really exciting news. I love it, baby. So Jenny Berger is asking in the Q&A, do you have any downtown apartment condo investment opportunities for investors currently? We don't. And it, and while this is super exciting for downtown, downtown is still not a place where you can accomplish the number one rule, which is that it's an asset that is cash flow positive, that pays for itself every single month. So while the future prospects of downtown are, we are extremely high about, and we have our own money invested in downtown, Right now, downtown is not a place that I'm going to put you for a turnkey rental property investment. The best place to earn a, the best risk-adjusted return is in those existing neighborhoods right around downtown because there, they cash flow, right? They pay for themselves every single month. You don't have to take on that additional burden of negative cash flow every single month. So that's why we put you right around downtown. It's because it's the best risk-adjusted return for you. Speaking of putting a chip on the table, Kelly Berenbaum put her second chip under contract yesterday. No way. That's I cool. didn't Kelly, know about that. Congratulations. Kelly, congratulations. Awesome. Man, that is I so cool. That. I love that. I love that. I'm glad you're showing up on the show, Kelly. You know, our favorite fiduciary, fiscal, financial <laughs> advisor. Friend. Fee-based. <laughs> All right, cool. So that being said, so Jenny says that's exactly where she wants to invest, right? This like downtown is why she would want to invest there. Yeah. Do you want to say why? investing in downtown condos is is more risky than investing in these workforce housing? Or yeah, right absolutely. If you were to invest in, first of all, there's not a whole lot of downtown condo inventory, but the rents aren't high enough relative to the purchase prices in your downtown condos in order for it to offset all the expenses. So your rental income is not high enough. There's not enough rental demand. So your rental income is not high enough to offset the expenses that you would incur as an owner of that uh, downtown condo. And so quite simply, when it doesn't produce break-even cash flows, we're not going to do that for you. Yeah. We don't believe that's the best risk-adjusted return. Yeah, we talk about cash flow as risk mitigation on the show, right? right? Like that's it's the difference. It's the reason why Jacksonville is so attractive because right. it has this like high appreciation plus positive cash flow. If not, you can go buy a condo in Miami too, right? Like there there might sure. there might be this like great appreciation, but if you're going negative in cash flow every single month, mm -hmm. it's going to be a bad experience and it's not going to allow you to buy multiples. Exactly. Right? So that's that's essentially the deal, right? Like you can go like do this and and bet money on that, but the idea that you're losing in the short run and not breaking even on cash flow or more positive is a much tougher pill to swallow as an mm -hmm. investor, less of a good experience. So this idea that you can invest around it in these homes where you get positive cash flow is kind of the is kind of the jam that we talk about here. Exactly. Yeah. And so while you can get that type of experience, you get a great experience with a great team to manage it for you in our neighborhoods, you can get something that pays for itself every single month in, in the neighborhoods that we're going to put you. And we are also expecting similar type of home price appreciation that you might see for your downtown condo. Correct. That's right. right. Yeah. So you get the best of all worlds by just stepping outside of downtown into our established neighborhoods. Yeah. All right, all right. So let's get back to this deal. So anyways, Jenny, that great, 
great reason to jump on chat with jwb.com, set up a call, have this explained better. But we want to get back to like adding value to everybody that's showing up. We got 70 plus people on the call. Today. All right. I love having you all here. Love it. So, all right, stadium deal. There's a margin of risk there, right? Like it's not a done deal. There's that like 600 to a billion thing to talk about. Right. Just, you know, you obviously don't know Shad personally. Right. As a real estate investor, what do you think is likely to happen here? Well, there's there's a lot of factors that are going into this deal, like we talked about. There's yeah. one more factor that I want to point out that is an unknown right mm-hmm. now. And it's what happens while the renovations are going on. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of bring light to that. And then we'll kind of like put a bow on how I cool. kind of see it happening yep. here. So one big unknown right now is where the Jags going to play while these renovations are going on. Mm-hmm. And the Jags have proposed two solutions. There is a two-year solution to do the renovations, which would be less expensive for everybody involved, but it would require the Jags to go and move for two years, to play outside of Jacksonville for two years. So there have been largely three places that they're they're considering the Jags playing their home games. It would be Daytona International Speedway in Daytona, the Swamp, Go Gators Gators. in Gainesville, or Camping World Stadium in Orlando. Mm -hmm. There are some other solutions, but that would require you know, bigger venues and it doesn't seem very likely. We yell go Gators when we say the swamp, when we say Daytona International Speedway, do I have to yell? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Continue. I don't know. I don't know what you yell as an NASCAR fan. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So, so that would be one proposal. Jags placed elsewhere for two years. We don't have that economic impact here. It would save $190 million mm-hmm. if that happens. There's another proposal, a four-year deal where the Jags actually stay in Jacksonville and play at the stadium, it would cost an extra $190 million for that deal to happen. But of course, we'd have the Jags playing home games here and there's all that economic impact as well. So don't know how that's actually going to play out. Mm-hmm. Clearly, there's a pension for everybody involved wanting the Jags to be here. But you know, $100 million, $190 million, this is with most stadium deals out there, when you poll the public, mm-hmm. most Pub, most of the public does not support a stadium deal. If you go to every other stadium deal around, it's hard for taxpayers to get around the idea that they are spending 600 to maybe more, 600 million or more, and basically giving that to an entity which is already owned by a billionaire. Yep. And that's just not human nature. Human nature. <laughs> I mean, we have- You're going to give that dude a tax break? You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, people look at the incentive package that JWB has received yeah. and there's negative sentiment about that as yeah. well. There's a lot more positive sentiment about it, yeah. but there's certainly those naysayers out there who say, why would we give a real estate development firm, you know, $9 million of an incentive package, you know, all of that. So th- that's just the way it is. That's just the lay of the landscape. So to save $190 million for the city is a big deal. Right. Who knows if the city could get enough support that city council would vote for not just a six hundred million dollar deal, but a eight hundred million dollar deal or a billion dollar deal. So there's a lot that's that's being at play here. But if you ask me, is this thing going to happen? Yeah. Like, hell yeah. Like, this is going to work. Yeah. Right. Like you said, too many people, too pot committed for this to not work. I mean, there is an opportunity for everybody to look like rock stars here. Yeah. For Shad and the Jags to look like rock stars, for Mayor Deegan to look like a rock star here, for city council to look like a rock star. You know, there haven't been many other times when you've had such an alignment of goals. And you know, if you go back to the show that I think we did either last week or the week before, where I started to talk about the amount of dollars that have grown as far as construction projects downtown, mm-hmm. I want to highlight that again. We went from five years ago, we had about $700 million of downtown construction happening. In 2022, we had over $4 billion. And what that should represent to you is belief, the ability to put your money where your mouth is and multiple people down t- who are downtown who are in this, right? You don't get $4 billion of development without multiple, multiple projects, yep. people putting their mouth, their money where their mouth is. So all of those people are, are absolutely set up to win. Yep. JWB is set up to win yep. when all of this happens. So, you know, I I see this working out. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I see everybody coming together. And even though I know it will face negative sentiment from, from the city, from, from taxpayers out there, simply because it's an incentive given to a billionaire, there is, 
there is so much positive here. And if we can get over that, that just perception and just understand the financial impact and what good this can do for our community, I think this is going to go through. I'm going to put a, a slightly that different right spin on it, GC, because I'm not a nugget. real well, estate expert, and post but I GWB did stay at a Holiday Inn YouTube Express last week. <laughs> nice. Now, YouTube, I, check it you know out. me, man. And I've studied ratty, influence you may my whole have life. Noticed there is something is about influence that is the, the influence of a gift, of show, right? In the seven layers of influence in the book by Robert Cialdini, that's like the seminal work for all this stuff. It talks about how, and and in the laws of power and all these, all these, and the art of war, it talks about the power of a gift, right? And how when the human being gives a gift to somebody else, they are, they earn all of this like goodwill and influence and all this stuff that is really, really powerful. And I can tell you that the smartest people in the world all know this. Right. And I, it, you know, you don't always one to one equate smart with riches, but I'm going to assume shot is a freaking smart guy. Yeah. Right. And I'm assuming that Mayor Deegan is a really smart lady. Mm -hmm. Right. And the opportunity for whatever is going to happen here, right. Whatever, whatever happens to like bring us to the agreement, mm -hmm. whether it is the city saying, you know what, Sean? Yeah, man, we're going to pick that up for you. Or Shad saying, you know what city, you know what, Jacksonville? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little bit of extra cashish on this thing. <laughs> Whoever does that is going to garner a giant bargaining chip, a sure. giant advantage of goodwill, a giant little slice of power and influence that really, really matters at the levels that all these people play. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you that both of those parties know that. Yeah. Right. So like you're saying there's an opportunity here for somebody to come and look like a hero. I can tell you that based on like brain science, there's an opportunity here for somebody to win a really, really big future, you know, I don't know if you want to call it a backroom deal or a front room deal mm -hmm. or whatever it's going to be, but somebody has the opportunity to set themselves up to be a real player in a future thing based on whatever concession they make in a deal that's going to end up being wildly, wildly popular because it happened. Yeah. And to be able to say that by be like, oh yeah, no, I was the one that, I was the one that like gave the gift. I was the one that backed off from the thing that I said mm -hmm. is going to be a real big power move that I'm sure these people are aware of. Well, I think you're right. I think there's, there's certainly that component too. I also think that there, this is so early on. Yeah. That's why this is breaking, right? Yeah. That's why we, we changed the lineup of the shows to talk about this so early on. This is going to be a, a really fun discussion point over the next call it, you know, six months, nine months. Mm -hmm. There are a, a whole lot of things that can be done to create value on both sides, mm -hmm. which you know, increase the return of investment on both, or maybe even de decrease the incentives required or yep. who knows, right? Like, you know, there's a whole lot of de development that shot has already done downtown. Mm -hmm. He may be willing to do more and like lump that into this deal. True. Right. True. You know, so, yeah. or the city might be willing to do more to support one of shots, current investments, plenty of upside to go around. Plenty of upside right. To go there's around. so yeah. much there yeah. that that's really why I'm confident, you know, even if you got to the end of the road and the vote was tomorrow yeah. and one person had to give a little bit, I agree with you. I think that there's too much to gain to not do that. Yeah. But I, but I really believe that there's so many positive forces in between now. And when we would get to that point, mm -hmm. we had a lot of smart people in our city. We got a lot of smart people in the Jags. We got a lot of smart entrepreneurs and, and early pioneers who are downtown leading this development, like mm -hmm. we can all figure this out yeah. and make everybody a hero. Agreed. So that's the mechanics of the deal. This is the idea that it's not done, but we believe it very likely to be completed, right? So we're going to talk about it as if it's completed. Now let's talk about the language in this video, yeah. right? And how it relates to the things that we've been talking about. To catch everybody here up, if you're, if you're new here, we have a, a lot of people today. So I'm assuming that there's some new people here. We love you being here. We want you to come back. We want to give you value. The We talk a lot on the show about how other cities, when their downtown becomes a thing, the rest of the city's real estate goes way up, mm -hmm. right? Like it, it's like a inflection point in the trajectory of real estate appreciation of mm -hmm. historical home price appreciation. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jenny, when we're, when you're talking about being so pumped about wanting to be in downtown or Connor talking about wanting to be in downtown, we're, we're, we're talking about this from the perspective of, yeah, man, you can, you can be, you can be pumped about being in downtown. Downtown's going to do great. But what we know from the data, is that when a downtown urban core comes online and it becomes an around-the-clock live-work-play thing, 
that real estate values all around that go up astronomically. We've seen it in Nashville. We see it in Charlotte. We have seen it in Denver. We see it in all these different places that it's not that you need to get in on downtown, but that you need to own real estate in that city when that happens. Mm -hmm. So on the show, naturally, we talk a lot about the future of downtown and how it's right at this like right at this brink of becoming something and making Jacksonville a completely different city that we talk about in the next three to five years. And the idea that people that can get in right now on the workforce housing side in five years may not have the, may not have the chips. Right. Right. So let's talk about the language in the video that is also talking about this, right? Number one, I got to give a shout out to our buddies, Nick, Evan, Clay, and Tim. I don't know if you saw the beginning of the video. There's people playing spike ball. Yeah, those, are our friends. those are the people that we play spike ball with that we started that like whole spike ball trend. All right. So that's, that's beyond the fact. The video early on talks about a urban destination, right? Talks about an urban destination. Oh, R Roberto Madero saying hundred percent. We saw that in San Diego. San Diego is another example of a downtown Absolutely. that was dormant, came online. Now forget about buying a Try buy rental property. There. Yeah. So, so it talks about early on building an urban destination. That's what we're talking about. This idea that if people live, work, play, and hang out in downtown, that starts that flywheel. It talks about, it says the nation noticing the growing workforce, the robust healthcare that we are arriving. Mm -hmm. We talk about a well-balanced economy of Jacksonville being something that is very, very attractive for companies to move their headquarters here mm -hmm. for people that live in like the, in, in the zoom world mm -hmm. to move here mm -hmm. and feel, and that is also risk mitigation, right? The uh, logistics, healthcare, FinTech, military. Uh, yeah. Financial and, fi and financial yeah. services, right? Like being a big one. It talks about connecting neighborhoods to the waterfront, urban connectivity, right? This is essentially what y'all have been doing, right. right? Like you have been building and developing around the urban core in order to kind of like connect all these things. And once this flywheel happens for you, the 5,000 properties that JWB manages around the urban core, there's this economies of scale that happens that, that creates this connectivity, makes these neighborhoods a better place. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we talked about, right? So, so they, we talk a lot about Nashville, right? Mm-hmm. They're talking about festivals and events in the stadium, particularly bringing the NFL draft to did, downtown. How many times have I talked about Nashville hosting the NFL draft and that being like a pinnacle of like their arrival? Yeah. Like it's the same terminology that we've been talking same, about in this video. Same terminology, right? So if you are talking about the appreciation rate in Nashville, go look at Nashville downtown, go look at the properties all around downtown, even all the way to Franklin, Tennessee these days. I, I got a data point to tell share me, with tell you. Tell me about that. I, I texted this to you like a week ago. Mm -hmm. I went and I started to look at the data to see how much more some of these cities that have had these renaissances for their downtowns have appreciated over the last 10 years. So I ran the numbers for Austin, Tampa, and Nashville. I chose those three cities. And wouldn't you know that over the last 10 years, those three cities have seen 23% more home price appreciation than the national average. 23% more home price appreciation than the national average in these cities that have created this downtown. Experience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You want to be a part of a growing downtown. That is one of the, you know, choosing a high, a higher than normal home price region, excuse me, a higher than normal home price appreciation region is important. Jacksonville happens to be one of those, right? We have 25% more home price appreciation here over the last 40 years than your typical cash flow markets. That's like standard. Uh, if what's, you want. what's the national average Kelly's asking? It was 8%. Mm -hmm. So it was the appreciation rate for those three cities was right, right around 10%. And the average appreciation over the entire country was about 8%. Okay, got it. So, so if you want to see what the biggest impacts to your growth are of your portfolio, it's not, did you get an extra $25 a month of cash flow, right? It's not, was the home price, you know, $10,000 less or $20,000 less than somewhere else. The biggest impact you can have is, is this a market that over the next 10 years, 20 years is going to grow more in terms of home price appreciation? Because at the end of a cycle, Looking at your investment, the biggest piece of the pie of your overall returns will be home price appreciation. So if you can choose a city that historically grows more than others, that's like the, that's the best thing you can do. But that's the first step. Mm -hmm. If you have insight, like we are sharing here about a change agent in that market that is setting it up to, to have higher than normal home price appreciation, even for that market, 
that is like investing in wealth building on steroids, right? It's like, this is like if, if Jacksonville was to win the, the award for having Amazon's second HQ, HQ. Yeah. right? Remember when everybody, every city in America wanted to be the destination for building that Amazon HQ too? And why did they want that? It's because the economics that follow that yep. and the home price and the rent price growth that, you know, cities were looking at that and they're like, oh man, we want to be a part of this. Now, there's other challenges when you have that sort of <laughs> growth from Amazon's headquarters that some cities have faced. But regardless, right, there's, yep. there's an economic impact that is there. This, it's a similar thing when you're talking about what's going on in downtown Jacksonville right now. And it's made up between the Jags stadium deal, you know, Shad's a shipyards renovation, the 20 blocks that JWB is developing downtown, plus all of these other developers that are too numerous for me to name here, right? That's the type of impact that we're talking about. And that's the best thing you can do for your return on investment, right? Hit your wagon to something like that. Yeah. Totally. Right. So like this idea, So the one thing that you also didn't mention is this idea that if the curve is going to bend, right? Like the curve, the appreciation rate curve is going to bend like it's done in these other cities based on historical repetitive patterns that happen once in a generation, sometimes in a city, right? You also didn't bring up the idea that, oh, and by the way, JWB's neighborhoods have appreciated 79% more than the average Jacksonville neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And this fallacy that everybody thinks it's like these expensive neighborhoods that are going to appreciate the most. Maybe even downtown isn't what appreciates the most exactly, but these JWB neighborhoods have proven to have higher than higher than the local home price appreciation. And that's been strategic based on your data flywheel as well. It's not where you would expect to necessarily see the type of growth, but that's why. You know, our clients work with us to place their money where it should be, right? You know, you may be looking at downtown and saying, oh, wow, I love this video. I want to buy everything downtown. But I know that there's better places for you to put your money than right next to downtown right now for a better risk adjusted return. Just like I knew for the last 17 years, there was a better place to put your money in these workforce housing neighborhoods, as we put it, better place to put your money than going and buying necessarily, you know, in you know, above middle income neighborhoods. Yep. Yep. So that's chat with JWB.com. And if you want to have that conversation, right? Like if you want to get into these workforce neighborhoods that have shown to historically appreciate more when everything else good is happening, we know that the bend is about to happen here in Jacksonville. Let's keep getting into some of this language, right? So we yep. talked about the festivals, the NFL draft, right? Another comparison to Nashville and these other, and these other places, nation, the nation noticing this being a moment for Jacksonville to really go from secondary market to primary market mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Another thing that they talked about, downtown as an economic engine lead to renovation of existing communities, mm -hmm. what we're talking about right now. So Love that. even more going into the JWB communities. And they mentioned the UF campus. We we had the mayor on, he kind of teased it, and then it came out. GC, you want to tell everybody like the whole UF campus thing, which I think is incredible. This is big. This is super big for Jacksonville. If you want to talk about the best way for your real estate portfolio to grow, it's so that median incomes rise in the places where your homes are or your buildings are. If you can attach yourself to something that is going to systematically and dramatically raise median incomes, that allows home prices to grow and rents to grow and allows people to still afford it. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest change agent that wasn't here before that will be here is the University of Florida building a satellite campus, a graduate level stat satellite campus here. And it's going to be located in downtown Jacksonville. And it's going to be a graduate program for fintech and uh, sorry, 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 sorry. AI powered fintech and healthcare tech. Oh my, can you think of better jobs to bring <laughs> yeah. to downtown? And now this yeah. becomes an incubator of talent. Yeah. And when you have an incubator of talent with the name of the University of Florida, yeah. which beyond Pablo's and mine and Sergio Pareto's undying love okay. of the University of Florida, it's a world class institution. Blue chip public institution in the United States. Like I've shared before in this in this show. I was heavily, heavily involved with economic development down in Miami for, you know, it's really working for them down there, right? Like mm -hmm. all the stuff that we did, I, I can, I can, I can say I'm very fortunate to have been a part of like this idea of, of 
building Silicon Beach down there. The one thing that they would have killed for the whole time that we're, we put this conference together, the mayor has like given out his text to like people on Sand Hill Road to like recruit crypto bros. Mm-hmm. They've done everything possible. The one thing that they could never do that they would have killed for is to bring a blue chip university program to Miami because it just wasn't feasible, right? Like no offense to University of Miami or FIU or, or, or like the great schools down there, they don't have, they don't have the coffers of the University of Florida. The mm-hmm. University of Florida is a, what's called a, a public Ivy League, right? Like they've, Kelly said that in prior, she's mm-hmm. this is not just coming from fanboys over here. Mm-hmm. It's a public Ivy League. It has the biggest AI supercomputer in the world. Uh, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and that AI supercomputer is going to power this AI, fintech, and healthcare tech, two industries that are, you know, economic cycle resistant. Yeah. The technology that empowers it based on the biggest catalyst black swan of things that are happening right now in the world, AI. And we're going to be the hub for that in downtown Jacksonville. I mean, ugh. it's going to be the biggest economic driver, something that wasn't here before that is here now, or that is coming. That is the biggest economic driver. I, I would even say it's a bigger economic driver than this real estate. Maybe, field. maybe like yeah. if from, you know, cause you can build the, you can build this real estate anywhere else. True. You can't, you can't leverage this kind of like, true educational power because at the end of the day companies that want the talent that can leverage the talent need yeah. that in order because to do it the you jet- can have the money you can have the you can have the jobs but if you don't have the talent feeder it's it's a really hard friction thing that's why Miami is trying I, I think it. you're 100 right yeah right yeah. you know you do a big deal with the the jags which is incredible for downtown but that's not attracting generations of high paying talent high high paying jobs and the talent to serve that and free labor to like get the high paying job while they're students yeah. and then hire the best in the class yeah. already having it right. Like essentially the same thing we're talking about right now, the ability to get insider trading into investing in a real estate portfolio. The idea of having that graduate program is insider trading for the best talent in the world to companies to poach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge, huge piece of the flywheel. Do you see, I think, You know, that's the language that we're seeing in this video. That's what we talk about on this show. I want to get into just like jamming through this Mm Q&A, but the overall lesson here that we're trying to share, the giddy up piece that we're trying to share, Mm -hmm. you want to, you want to just kind of like put a button on that? Yeah. I think, you know, especially our, our friends of the show for the last year or so, you've heard us talk about our commitment to downtown Jacksonville. You've seen the numbers, you've seen you know, the outsized home price appreciation in Jacksonville before this, you've seen what has happened in Nashville and in Tampa and Austin, some of these other places. We're trying to connect the dots here of how this can help you make the best decision for your money. Well, I think it's important for you to hear it beyond just me. What you heard in that video was the Jags set recognizing the same opportunity talking about that same economic impact and relating it to their stadium deal but you can supplement that stadium deal with jwb's investment or the university of florida satellite campus or any of these three or four or five other things that are going on in downtown jacksonville and it's all leading to the same conclusion that this is once in a generation type of an opportunity for our downtown to be a beacon of change to improve the lives of the community and to raise median incomes. And when median incomes raise in a short period of time, like we're expecting as a real estate investor, that is the best thing that could happen for you, as long as you own those assets. But you have to own those assets before that leap happens. And so that's the big connection of all of this is that we're presenting this opportunity. You're seeing it in different people that are saying similar things. But this is not going to be around for a long time. This is that urgency component. But by not being around for a long time, do you see what what I hear you saying is essentially everybody that for the last nine years has been buying or not buying Jacksonville real estate today is like, really, I'm going to spend 200000 for that? Yeah. And, and they're like freaked out by the idea that it's two hundred grand. What we're seeing is that by the time that this news goes mainstream and this starts going into effect, you're going to be saying, really, I'm going to spend 500000 for that? Mm-hmm. And we're going to say, yeah, because there's still upside. But the bottom line is that getting in right now allows you to be that person that in 2011 bought one of these property for $80,000. Yeah. And, and everybody's going to look back and be like, oh, man, you're a genius for doing that. 
But that genius that did that in 2011 was like, ooh, I don't know. They <laughs> you faced know, like, a lot of scrutiny. They faced a lot of scrutiny. So that same scrutiny that you'd be facing right now, it's like, really, I'm going to spend 250 grand. I'm going to spend 300 grand for a house that, you know, five years ago was worth 120, 180. Mm -hmm. That same feeling that that person in 2011, 12, 13, 14 felt. And what we're saying right now is that what happened then is about to happen now in a faster way. You think so? So the idea that you get in before all this development happens, before Jacksonville arrives, which we believe is inevitable, is a once in a lifetime opportunity to like generate wealth in a short amount of time. And it also happens to come with... You can go figure out your deal downtown and play in the billionaire game, like what I call sitting at the Bellagio table and playing at the $500 one hand table. Or you can go downtown Vegas and play at the $5 craps table and play at a casino that's really friendly for beginners, <laughs> you know? Yes. And I'm not even going to call this a casino, right? But like everything that we talk about in the course, nyaiclass.com, is that everybody does this wrong in general. The reason why people are so freaked out by real estate is that they spend all this time looking for the property. And then they're like, well, and then the market makes sense. And the, oh yeah, let me check out Craigslist to see who my property manager is. <laughs> when, when at the end of the day, the thing that's going to help you succeed, the thing that like seven years into it, when you're owning this property and you and your significant other are like, oh man, there's a turn happening. Do we stay or do we go? Do we want to continue in this thing? The thing that really drives the lower maintenance costs, the lower vacancy costs, the over-delivering on return on investment is having a partner, a professional property manager that has their incentives aligned with what you are doing, that is the one bringing you the deal that they are completely vertically integrated through. And it just so happens that right now, right before this generational opportunity in this one specific place that happens to be Jacksonville. There also happens to be the ideal partner for the every man, the every woman, the, mm -hmm. the little guy like myself to go in, grab the smallest chip that they have to be able to put it in into the $5 table and, mm -hmm. and like roll aces, you know, like I think I multiplied multiple things, hit blackjack, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Like to me, that is, that is the gem in this whole equation is the confluence of all the stuff happening us being able to see it, the fact that it's not illegal to have insider trading in real estate, and the fact that you have all the support system in order for the average person that isn't a billionaire, that isn't even a 500,000 air, whatever you want to call it, to succeed in this scenario using your retirement portfolio, if that's what you want to use, allocating from your already existing portfolio, hitting with that bonus that you're going to get this year in the middle of this like murky economy and having the certainty that this is all going to work out, I think is incredible. Man, what do you think? Mic drop moment right there, man. Yeah, that was great, man. I just love how passionate you are. I really do, man, dude. I've lived this in Miami. I know you right? have. Like I lived this in Miami. Yeah. Like I saw the Urban Core come online. It was already a. It was already a rich person's game. I didn't have the wherewithal to be able to do. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the relationships. I didn't have all of this stuff. And I've seen it front, front and center. And I know what this can do. I made that mistake before. I had money in it. I pulled out early. Yeah. So to me. Everything we've done over the last three plus years of starting this community, creating this educational resource so that you're comfortable with it, creating this transparency based on you don't just get to talk to the founder of this $150 million company that's been on the front page of the Wall Street Journal multiple times, but you get to talk to 60 other people that are doing it, no bias. <laughs> right, like just talk to them. Like ten, five people gave out their phone number here, right? Really? Like, just that's call so cool. them. You know what I mean? Like the the idea that you don't have to hear from me, hear from somebody else in order to make you feel comfortable and make that move and create the class so that you really understand what's happening so that people can become generationally rich in a short amount of time right now. I don't get a lot of opportunities to create that kind of impact, man. So like, I'm just jacked up about it. Yeah, man. I love it, man. It's from the heart and yeah. it's formed by what you've seen in the past, but it's just like a great confluence of opportunity right now. I don't think there's been a better time to take advantage of it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Uh, go to chatwithjwb.com. Like that's your next step, right? Chatwithjwb.com. Yes. If you want to like talk to an expert about it, that isn't me. I'm just a talking head up here. Do we want to jam through these questions right now, GC? Do you want to save this for the Thursday show? Well, we have a very special guest on Thursday. Who's a special guest on Paul Shively from Fortune Builder is coming on Thursday. So I know that'll be a meaty show in itself. Let's let's do our best. Let's go. I'll I'll put my best like zeroed in answer 
focus on this and we'll see what we can do. Got it. Starting with the fairy godmother, which is another opportunity to meet people that are not us. She's saying, hey guys, I have a meeting to run to, but please announce anyone not in the chat that we're having a Northern California, not your average investor meetup on Sunday, June 25th at 2 p.m. at the BJ's restaurant at Brew House and Brew House in Cupertino, California. June 25, 2 p.m., BJ's Brew House in Cupertino, California. They can contact me at 408 408- 833-9868. So go meet other people that have done this. You're going to meet the Malines, I'm sure, and Jen and, and a bunch of other people that are fans of the show. All right. Danny Davis. Greg, years ago, JWB offered an opportunity for accredited investors to join a group for more speculative investments. Might JWB offer that again for some speculative downtown investments in the near future? Great question, Danny. The answer is no. Um, we do not have any plans to offer what we would call speculative investments. We're we're just sticking to our core, which is risk mitigation with upside. And so, nope, it's more of what we have been offering and we'll continue to offer. Medj Garcia in the chat saying that she's going to be at that BJ's in Cupertino. All right. Chris Gonzaga, illustrious Hudson Valley of New York. Greg, are there any condos, condops in Jax? And does JWB have any interest in this type of real estate? Are there any condos in Jacksonville? Yeah, there's some condos in Jacksonville. You know, I wouldn't say we have a specific interest in condos or not. I mean, so sometimes we'll have condos that are available within our typical turnkey inventory. If you're specifically asking about condos in downtown, there are condos there, but that is not a focus for us. You know, we are very specific about the neighborhoods that we put you in because we believe it's going to have the best risk adjusted return. So if there was a condo where the numbers worked and it was in our neighborhoods where we're going to be able to deliver that, we would be able to make that available for you, but we're not going to stray from our neighborhoods just because we see a shiny object. We believe we can get the best of all worlds in our neighborhoods. Got it. Condo ops are not condo is what they're saying. So condo ops, res, and commercial is what Chris Gonzaga is saying in there. Con, condo ops, res, and condo commercial. Ops, mm-hmm. not condo. condo opportunities, not condo. Oh, okay. Condo opportunities in Jacksonville. Yeah, I think the same answer applies. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Very nice. Billy Green, Mountains of Colorado. Not man. Says, in the last year or three, has there been any talk, buzz, or rumors of any other professional sports teams being created or in or moving to Jacksonville? Yes, there's a new professional hockey team. Mm -hmm. There's a professional soccer team. Tim Tebow is an investor in one of those. I can't remember, but it was just in the news. UFC has come to town. UFC has come to town. The Jacksonville, the uh, the Jumbo Shrimp, Mm -hmm. elevated from Double A minor league baseball Mm -hmm. to Triple A minor league baseball. There you go. So there have been some significant sports announcements. Maybe a professional spike ball team. Yes. I mean, waiting for the call. (laughs) I'm waiting for that. And I'm and I wouldn't be surprised if a professional pickleball team comes over here because it is on fire out here. So all right. Denny Davis asks, Greg, so by inference, if Jax goes up by an extra conservative 20% above and beyond over the next 10 years due to the condo impact, to, due to the downtown impact, that means instead of 4.6 year over year price appreciation, we would see up to 6.6% year over year increases. For a person who puts 25% down on a home, if this happens, that's an extra 8% roughly per year prior RR jar, IRR adjustment add a few homes and this is astronomical growth. What do you think about those numbers? Danny, that's awesome. Thank you for pointing that out. I would say there's even more than those numbers that you just pointed out there because while you're while you're saying, okay, well, if it went up, you know, 20% in your IRR IRRs went up 20%. I think it'd even be more than that if we put the numbers to it because it'd be your home price appreciation percentage would go up so much more if home price appreciation went up from 4.6% to 6.5%. So even more credence to what you're saying. I think the numbers would be even bigger if we were to put the numbers in. Maybe we do that. Maybe we, Maybe we do. That. I mean, it's a little bit of a uh, deviation from my normal under promise and over deliver yeah. moment, but you know, maybe I have one of those like Will Ferrell, like blackout moments in old school. And I'm just like, Hey, what could this possibly be? And I become the hype man for the show and you bring me back down to reality. That would be interesting. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in for opposite day. <laughs> Jenny Berger asks, Oh, there was something that, does that include the leverage piece of it? The like, IRRs? Yeah. Like if it goes up, if it goes up that much mm-hmm. and you're putting 25% down, like, I mean, did, is that yeah. If you is? had six, six and a half percent year over year home price appreciation on an asset that you only put 25% down, your, your, your overall returns from that appreciation would be a lot more than just 20%. Yeah. Right. It would be a lot more than that because you only have 25% down. Yeah. Right. It would, it would only be 20% more if you bought it all cash. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I think the IRRs would jump up even more than what you're talking about, Denny. And your point is incredibly valid. That's why I'm passionate about this. this is why Pablo's passionate about it. It's, it is the thing that I'm going to be talking about for, I don't know, the next year. Who for knows, sure. right? Like it is the biggest opportunity that I see. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Berger. Jenny, thanks for coming to the show today. Bunch of really great questions. I met Jenny. She was on, on campus here at JWB one time. Jenny, it's really nice to see you. That's awesome. Timeline on that satellite campus being complete. Well, the money has been appropriated. They're still deciding where it's going to be. It could be in the north core of Jacksonville. It could be near the fairgrounds, which is next to the stadium, which is what you heard. So there's still some decisions needing to be made of when that would happen. I don't know the the timeline on it. You know what? Let me get back to you. I, I Sometimes I get all the dates mixed up in my head. So let me get back to you on a, on just an estimated timeline from what I'm hearing as far as that camp. Interesting. So I didn't realize it. So, then, so now there's two, because last time we talked about it, there was the money wasn't secured yet. Just like we had figured out that there was interest and there was like a, there was like a home for it kind of thing, right? Like yeah. the deal had been brokered. All the players were like, all right, we're in for this. Then the money needed to be secured. Mm -hmm. So now the money is secured. Money secured. City council voted on it. City council voted on it. Money secured. And now they're just debating, does it go in this part of downtown or that part of downtown? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. cool. and, and then maybe there may be other places that it could go, but not, but downtown is where it's going to be. We're yeah. just trying to figure out where it is downtown. So this part of the Big downtown, deal. that part of the downtown, we try to, we or that part of the downtown. There we go. It's like down, downtown or up downtown or, you know, down medium you town. I'm going to try to reach out to our connections and see if we can get one of the decision makers for UF to, to jump on the show and, and to talk about it. That would be pretty cool. Can it be Sergio Pareto? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sergio is big wig, man. <laughs> big dog. Go get her. All right. Medge Garcia. Medge, always great to have you back, mm -hmm. right? She's asking, has the insurance situation improved there in Florida? The long-term prospects of the insurance situation have absolutely improved. Short run, we knew that it wasn't going to be solved overnight. So I won't say that insurance premiums have gone down. The rate at which insurance companies were having financial problems and the rate of which companies were leaving the state mm -hmm. has definitely decreased, but insurance premiums haven't gone back down on renovated homes. So short run, not much has changed in terms of your cost, but long run, the problem has largely been fixed and it should be getting better and better from here. And it may take a few years for premiums to get back to where we want them to be. Yeah. And Mej, that's the result of this like big suit, you know, like lawsuit that happened that got lobbied for a while by the insurance industries. We had Whit Ritchie, who is one of these folks that was going to the Capitol and lobbying. She's the head of Rich Insurance, which is a preferred partner here for, or she does, like, I know she does my insurance and stuff like that. And um, we had her on the show about a month, two months ago, she broke it all down. So if you go back, um, somebody asked in here, I think it was, oh, Connor asked if there's a, if there's going to be a replay. Oh no, somebody else asked if there was a replay of this. You know, we have, this is the live show, but we also publish this to podcasts. So if you look up Not Your Average Investor Show on the podcast, if you look up in YouTube, Not Your Average Investor Show, you can see all the past episodes. So if you go back a couple months, you're going to see the Whitney Ritchie ins big insurance update and you can find out everything you want to know about that insurance because Whitney Ritchie is the the real life flow from Progressive. She is. And I dressed as flow for the episode. because yes, she, she did. <laughs> she <left. laughs> Woo, I forgot about that. Do you see Good job. Uh, good job displacing my topic and uh, putting in a topic that would bring a whole bunch of people bad. and Still turn into like, a, no, I, I don't want you to feel bad anymore. I, like, I honestly, like you were right. I was wrong. You're very handsome. <laughs> I'm very you're my best boy that I could go to you and be like, hey, listen, dude, I know you're going to love yeah. me if I, if I suggest this, but I think it's the right thing. I think it's the right thing. I think this is a momentous moment. I think people, they gave us the signal. They wanted to hear about it. They showed up. They asked great questions. You know, like this is a community driven yeah. show. So when something comes from you, we're going to address it. Whatever question you have, whatever, whatever things need to happen, we're going to talk about it on the show. He's going to do his homework. I'm going to do my thinking and we're going to show up and be a little bit entertaining about it, but try to give you as much value and as much good advice as we can. I love it. So this was awesome, buddy. Good call. I think this is a show that we're going to reference oh, yeah. over and over and over again. Questions that come in. Okay. You got to watch this show. So thank you all for being here. It's just been really awesome to share this with you and also to connect the dots. And I hope the dots are connecting for you all as well, because I think this is one of those big inflection points as an investor and, and for our city. Yeah. So like we said, Thursday, we got Paul Shively in the house. Third time guest, always brings the heat. Oh yeah. Really good about making fun of us, which is something yeah, I really like. I really, I value that. He's a, yeah. he's a good, he's a good make funner. -er. So he fits in really, really well here in this community. Bunch of 
bus chopping. <laughs> maker, funner, uh, bus chopper. Maker, funner, bus Very chopper. Good. Community also happens to be a big time real estate expert with Fortune Builders, which is a very good friend of the shows here. Great dude, a lot to offer. And I just think, man, I think this is not your average insight here, right? Like this is not an average investor tip. And just like those folks that in 2012, like you want to look back at somebody and see the people that put money into Jacksonville in 2012 and have had these astronomical rates of returns. That was not an average decision to be made back then. It's not an average decision to be made now. And if you want to like have these outsized returns, you can't think like an average investor. We'll see you on the next one. See you.